legislation, and I feel strongly about it. But the people who have the most at stake are the American people. So we need to stay focused on what these bills will mean to the people who are just looking for a little bit of breathing room, a fair chance to build a decent middle class life, to succeed and thrive instead of just hanging on by their fingernails. It's about making sure we lower child care costs. It's about saying let's pay our child care workers more. It's also about understanding that a lot of these issues disproportionately affect women in the workforce, and we've seen as many as two million women since the beginning of the pandemic have to leave the workforce, and we want to do everything we can to protect everyone, knowing that we can do more, we can build back better. The president and vice president released two separate videos today doubling down on the need to pass their Build Back Better Act, otherwise known as the Reconciliation Bill. The vice president emphasized the cuts to child care costs for families after the visit, her visit to a child care center in New Jersey on Friday. Today, the Poor People's Campaign marched to the Capitol to help put a face on who the plan would benefit the most. Low wage essential workers joined the group and gave their own personal testimonies of how poverty and low wages have impacted them. They also brought signed petitions with the names of more than 100,000 people who are demanding Congress pass the bill. Bishop Barber's group did not meet with the president today, but did get to meet with White House aides, the president, and members of the House of Representatives. Joining me now to discuss is West Virginia Poor People's Campaign co-chair, Pam Garrison, and a home health care worker from Phoenix, Joan Steed. Ms. Garrison, so just give us a, you know, the big picture. What were you hoping to gain by marching on the Capitol today with the voices of the low-wage workers? The need, I mean, that the people are ready. We want this. We need this. Um, the Build Back Better would help lift up so many people and bring them out of poverty. That that, And this isn't about a black issue or a white issue. We're Americans. This is an American issue. This is we haven't invested in our country since the industrial age. It is past time that we we invested in us, the people. Um, you invest in the people, and we'll get this country back going. We're not asking for a handout. We're asking for a, a hand up. We're asking for just a fair fair chance, a fair wa wages. Uh, the Build Back Better plan, and we don't want it skinny mm -hmm. down. What it is now is what we need. Right. Ms. Steed, I would like to, you know, tell us how the Build Back Better plan would help you, you believe, in your life right now. I care for people whose grandchildren make more money at Starbucks than I do, and I'm caring for someone who's terminally ill under hospice, they need care that is above the normal care, and yet I get paid the same wages as someone who works in fast food or mops floors. And I don't think America knows the impact this bill will have. If the children are cared for and the women and men who work can afford daycare, then America will get back to work, will begin to prosper, and we'll see things change. Any industry, like the home care industry, where I come into your home and I care for your family member, during COVID, it is life and death. I'm putting my life on the line. And to see child care get financed, to see women paid the wages they deserve, we all know that the majority of people coming into your home and caring under health care is going to be a woman. And she's going to get paid what America feels she's worth. We're worth more than what we're getting paid, and that's what Build Better Back will do. It'll pay people what we deserved 10 years ago, five years ago, but we'll take what we can to get caught up. America's 10 years behind on wages. We need to move forward. They've made a plan. Let's follow the plan. Let's improve America. Right. Right. Ms. Garrison, as you were alluding to earlier, the uh, Speaker Pelosi has signaled that, you know, we they may just get rid of whole parts of the Build Back Better plan, maybe as a way of allowing more aid to go to the remaining parts. What do you say to that? I'd say nothing. 
I'd say no. We need it all. We've been done been needing it. It is past time. And when they start cherry picking this and that, we know who's going to get left out. It's going to be the low wage workers. It's going to be the poor. It's going to be the least of us in America. When they start cherry picking, we know who's going to get cut. The people's going to get cut. Corporations are going to do all right. They're going to make sure they take care of them, just like they always do. They did the same thing to the Affordable Care Act. They started cherry picking it to where now it's nothing to what it was when it, w when it was introduced. Misty, do you believe that the members of Congress and people in the White House actually have a sense, a hand on the pulse of the people that this would actually help? Do you believe that they're taking voices like yours into consideration when they're debating this bill and deciding whether or not they're going to vote on it, whether or not they're going to keep the whole thing or, you know, sh uh, shave it down to just have pieces of it left? No, even within my state. I don't feel represented at all. I don't think they go into society and look at what's wrong and try to repair it. I think it's like almost like an automobile. The transmission has to go out before we put a new one in. We knew it was going out. And America knows low wage workers are what keeps America going. And, and they don't want to raise the, the wage and they don't want to lose us. But we keep compromising in America, and they have no idea what it's like every day to get up and work harder than a congressman and make one fifteenth of what they make, one one hundredth of what they make. This isn't about money. This is about how hard people work day to day, and you sit in a Congress seat and you debate whether or not society can change. Go out in society and talk to people. You'll see what the real world is. Right. I believe a lot of Ms. politicians are out of touch with the world. Mr. Garrison, uh, the Poor People's Campaign was able to meet with two of Biden White House aides today. How did those meetings go? Uh, they went well. They, you know, they were they were supportive. But we have found that out when in the Poor People's Campaign, we hear words, but we look for actions. You know, we want more than just their in pretty words. Uh, we we want to see the actions behind those words. Uh, the Build Back Better plan has, in my state, we're one of the poorest states there is. We're the last on the list for education. We're pretty much last on the list for about everything. And then my senator's standing up there telling me, well, I, I should be happy I'm surviving. I don't need uh, a 15 minimum wage. I, I can I can survive on less than that. I can make do. He looks down at his nose at us from his yacht and tells us, oh, I know where you're coming from. I'm on your side. And then he goes on the floor and, and does just the opposite and tries to cut everything that's for the people plumb out of it. You're not representing me. You're not representing our state. You're representing the black, your dark money and your pockets. And we know it. And we're calling him out on it. We are tired. We are done. We we have suffered long enough without anything. And we want we want the Build Back Better plan. We want the reconciliation. We want the security of our vote. We want it all together, not piece by piece. We want it all. We deserve it all. We right. are the people. Pam Garrison and Joan Steed, thank you both for joining me today. I really appreciate your time.